Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Brian Gracelee. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in San Francisco for Oracle Open World. We are on the Howard Street where they block off the roads for this awesome event, 60,000 people here. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host, Brian Grace, Leanna, us at wikibon.com. And our next guest is Anat Angus, who is the IT manager, UZ Leuven. Welcome to theCUBE, appreciate yep. it. Thank you for being here. So thanks for flying all the way over <laughs> from Europe to attend and uh, come to Oracle Open World. It's great, great to see you. So tell us a little bit about what you guys do. Let's, we'll start there. So uh, I work for, for the largest healthcare provider in, in Belgium, so University Hospitals uh, uh, Leuven. Uh, and yeah, hospitals measured in beds, so we have 2,000 beds, 9,500 employees, just to give a, a, a small idea. Uh, what we do uh, a little bit different is for the electronic patient record and uh, medical record, we build this by ourselves. And so we have 70 Java developers uh, in-house working day in, day out uh, on the software. That means that we work also completely electronically. Uh, there is no paper involved anymore uh, in the hospital. Uh, everything goes electronically, also the ordering, the flow, and this kind of things. Uh, and that makes it also very challenging, of course, because when the system is down, we have a small problem because the <laughs> hospital stops working uh, at that moment. Also what we do is because we have a very unique uh, solution there. Uh, and in healthcare, you want to collaborate with other hospitals uh, because for a patient, it's very important that he can, for example, search for the best treatment as uh, close with his home as possible. So we work together with 18 other hospitals and we share the medical file. And that's our application. Uh, and with sharing, I mean really sharing. That means when a patient goes to another hospital, the physicians there see exactly the same as the physicians uh, at our hospital. That's what the users want. Right? That, That's yeah, what people want. That's I mean, also they, what, what we want. Yeah, it's what you want. Because uh, it's, it's very important if you want to collaborate with other hospitals. Not, everybody, not every hospital has the same speciality. So it's important for patient safety that you can send the patient to the right hospital, to the right physician. What was the problem? What was the, the old way of doing things? Because the databases would lock everything down. Data protection was the primary yeah. concern, and that would foreclose a user experience, or doctor experience in this case, yeah. to provide the best care possible. Uh, in the past, it was terrible, because in the past, what happens, then a patient wants, for example, a second opinion, uh, or we say, no, maybe you have to go to that hospital, or the hospital say you have to go to Leuven, uh, because they are very specialized. <laughs> but then you start over from zero. You start again, all yeah. the exams, uh, everything. Uh, and that, yeah, that takes a lot of time, but also a lot of money, of course, uh, that, that's spent there. Uh, in the best case, you send the paper file over to the new physician, but well, that's very boring. You have to, to read to, to all this. It's, it's very time consuming and not efficient. Right. So we were talking earlier, you guys are a little bit unique. You, you do in-house development, so you're a little bit of a mm -hmm. technology shop. You're essentially a service provider to a number of mm -hmm. different hospitals. And then you're IT. And, and when people think of healthcare, they think about user experience. They think mm -hmm. about, you know, some of that feels like sometimes it's in contrast to, to IT. How do you guys think about, you know, creating great user experiences? Things that the doctors feel comfortable with, the patients feel comfortable with, and then deal with, you know, all the challenges, you know, security and data privacy. Yeah. Talk about just the mindset you guys have around that. Well, that's very important, of course. That's, that's clear. Uh, it's already, let's, let's first talk about the physicians and the nurses, because that is, for me, my first users. That's your customer. Yeah, that's, for me, it's my customers in the first round. Um, and what they expect is to have the right data on the right moment, wherever they are. They can be maybe abroad, they can maybe in the hospital, and, 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 and that makes it very challenging. And it must be very, very, also very fast. For example, when you arrive in emergency room, well, I don't hope, but yeah. assume you arrive, of course, the physician there, they want in immediately all your information. But it's a, a data-driven business. Yeah. But also, your, for example, your radiology images of 10 years ago, because it can be important at that moment. Um, so for that, for, for example, to give that uh, flexibility, we keep everything online, on spinning disks, on flash, whatever, uh, because yeah, they want the radiology image in less than two seconds. If it comes from tape or other media, it takes just too long. Right. And, and, and that's very important. Security, for example, uh, 
that's a very, and privacy, especially in Europe, it's very complicated. So what we do there is, for example, you can only have access to a patient file when you have a kind of contact with that patient. So when you go to surgery a patient, from that moment we open automatically the patient file uh, for that physician. And then depending on what kind of operation it is, let's say after three months, we stop again uh, the access to that patient you file. You guys were lucky enough to get the M7 in beta. The the big announcement here is going to be that we're kind of teasing it out early, which is great because John Fowler opened the kimono yeah. yesterday, yeah. Uh, one of our favorite guests on theCUBE. Talk us, talk us through some of the things that you've done mm -hmm. with the beta, mm -hmm. some, share some insight, yeah. some color. I mean, is it earth shattering, groundbreaking? Mm -hmm. And obviously the end to end security yeah. must be a home run because now you can write software on top yeah. of it, obviously with the Spark solution, to move through yeah. hospitals, which is the number one concern, yeah, yeah. data protection, yeah. security, whatnot. So give us the, give us the uh, walk around on the yep. test drive you have in the beta. Yep. Okay, so, like I mentioned before, we work together with those other hospitals. Five years ago, we only managed our 2,000 beds. Today, we are going over the 10,000 beds and we will end probably in the next year at 15,000 beds. So we have to scale up uh, five times, seven times. Yeah. So my first, uh, first uh, interest in the M7 was scalability. Can I scale? because the business was asking this. Uh, can we assign more other contracts with other hospitals? Uh, so I have a seat that the infrastructure can scale up. So we did a lot of scaling tests with the, M with the M7. Uh, and uh, they were storming, the, the results were, were really awesome. Uh, because we, what, we can, what we saw was, first of all, an, a performance improvement of three times. And that's huge. And so today, if we compare it with our current load, and depending how you look to the figures, at least we can scale up 10 times, but probably 15 times with, uh, with the M7. So you get a performance increase of 10x, up to 10x yeah. or more, who knows, you have to put your envelope yeah. on that. But 3x that you pointed out, was there added functionality you were able to do on top of that? So okay, I yeah. get the, you can always look at something and say, oh, I made it go faster. Yeah. But are you getting any enablement from that, this environment? So, so to be, f because we are now faster, we can be faster yeah. with, with, with the N7, we can also scale up with, with, with more, uh, more hospitals can join. Also give other opportunities, because the system is much faster, the bandwidth to the memory is much faster. We can also do other applications, other kinds of applications that in the past were very, or more difficult or very difficult. I give just, just one, one, ex uh, one example. Uh, or, our application is very transactional, of course, eh? it's, it's clear. For example, when you prescript a medication, a drug, uh, yeah, we check, for example, you're a woman, you're pregnant, can, is this combination, is this possible? They're very simple checks. You can do this online because you can give a response in a few, s in less than a second. But we also want to do more complex checks. And, and that's very difficult to do online. So we create microservices, we call it angels. Uh, and what those angels are doing is uh, in the background, uh, just checking a lot of data uh, and compare it and do very, ex uh, very complex rules and at the end give a message to the physician saying, hola, we have found something. Because the hardware now is much more faster. Uh, yeah, we can do <laughs> much more angels. Uh, Everyone needs after. a guardian angel, come yeah. on, versus <laughs> the devil, right? I mean, it's a, so, so, so that's one of the kind of applications we now can do even more. We can put more angels in place uh, for looking after to the patients. Yeah, so I, this creates an interesting situation because in the past, I mean, developers don't want to think about plumbing. They don't want to think about hardware. H how much you know, do your developers now go, oh, I, I do care about this hardware. I do uh, care what I can do in SQL. What, talk about that mindset. Well, we were very happy uh, already in the past that we collaborate very, very closely with our developers. Uh, because uh, I personally, I don't believe that you can develop without thinking on the infrastructure and vice versa. Uh, there must be a really good uh, interaction. They must know what the cost is from uh, 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 how, how they program from special kind of, uh, of procedures that they, they do. Uh, so, and in, in our hospital, we have a very close relationship. So that works very easily. Of course, when you have more performance on the other side, you can do uh, much more things uh, uh, at the end. Uh, if you have more functionality that you can offer, of course, our developers can uh, can use this and will use this in the in the future. Microservices cloud, these are DevOps terms. We saw Larry Ellison on stage last night. He even put Docker on a slide. Yeah. We're like, woohoo, <laughs> all right. I guess Docker's a standard now. Yeah. Right. Um, which is which shows the new way for Oracle. So I gotta ask you, are you what's the what's the sentiment internally with your team? Are you guys high-fiving each other? Are you guys super excited? What are some of the things that have changed your life 
with this new capability and new mm. performance, uh, and certainly with the security piece. What's, mm. been, what's been the sentiment, what's mm. been the vibe, mm. what's been the uh, overall uh, feeling? Yeah. So where we go, for example, the, the security features of the M7 is uh, definitely something uh, we, we really want to use. Uh, it, uh, especially uh, the end-to-end the -end en encryption, for example. Uh, in the past, uh, we already looked for it for ages, uh, like everybody. And uh, yeah, you try to solve it uh, in software. Well, uh, and it's hard because it's, it's not hard on a simple system. But if you, when you have a system where 6,000 users are continuously online and do an enormous uh, amount of transactions, yeah. then you can't handle this. You, you need a huge uh, infrastructure. Uh, to handle this. So we are really thrilled uh, with uh, the silicon features that you can indeed uh, uh, have uh, uh, this kind of features in, in, in silicon. The same with decompression uh, of data, uh, this kind of things. We really want to want to use uh, this as fast as possible. You know, we've talked, we, you mentioned a couple times, you guys are a development shop, you do in-house development. Mark Heard this morning said, you know, he expects 30%, 40% of people doing dev tests in the cloud mm -hmm. moving. If, you were to, if he were to come to you, knock on your door today, and yes. say, hey, why aren't you doing your development mm. in our cloud? Is that something you guys are excited about? Is that something right now there's still laws and yeah. barriers that prevent it? I'm the wrong guy to talk about <laughs> it. Because I'm an infrastructure guy, and as, as infrastructure guy, I say, well, we can handle this perfectly, and we give the service to our uh, developers. But uh, we, s we have the same discussions inside in, our, in the hospital also. The developers are very excited about the new tools. And uh, you see that as an infrastructure guy, we have some difficulties to follow them. Yes, uh, yeah. And uh, so we are now looking how, uh, how we will do this. And so, uh, of course, the, the, the problem that we have is uh, uh, we are a very agile uh, developing cycle. Uh, we, we, we develop, we, each week we have a new version of our software. Uh, and uh, to, to do this, that means that also all, all our developers works on the real data, because otherwise it's it's yeah. almost not possible. Have to start moving and towards then infrastructure as code and, 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 and agile. Yeah. And, and yeah. So well, how do you guys do that? So infrastructure as code is a term we love. Obviously, DevOps ethos mm -hmm. means application developers don't have to mind what's going on under the hood. All the stuff provisioning yeah. up and down the stack. So how do you guys do it so successfully as infrastructure guys? Because most people don't look at agile and say, oh, the infrastructure guys, yeah. they're the ones kind of the slow boat to China, if you will, compared to the, 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 you know, the app developers. Yeah. So how do you do agile as an infrastructure mm -hmm. development team? And then, and then the second part of the question is, how do you enable those guys to be free of all the infrastructure configuration? Mm -hmm. Well, I think <laughs> that's difficult. I'll put you on the spot there. Yeah, it's difficult. But I think the key, uh, what makes our uh, successful is, uh, is the real integration of and the developer and the database administrator and the infrastructure guys. Uh, they sit continuously uh, together. Uh, they uh, really fit very well. They help each other. Uh, it's for in, in, our, in our hospital, in our setting, not a problem that when my DBA see that some of the new procedures that they have put in production generate a lot of I.O., for example, they go to sit together. And, in, and because we have such an ideal uh, process in developing, yeah, in a few days we can even uh, patch this and roll out over, the, over, all, uh, over all the hospitals. So, so you're in essence having to, you know, there, there's engineered systems, which is sort of, Oracle does a lot of the integration mm -hmm. work. You're almost having to build engineered IT teams so that you are blurring those yeah. lines between them. Yeah. And that's very important, especially when we want, uh, in healthcare also, well, I think in most of business, but we find in healthcare, we must be very flexible, yeah. because especially in a university hospital, things change very fast. Uh, and, uh, and to handle this, we must be very flexible. The, the developing team must be very flexible. They are, because they can generate every week a new code base. Well, I also have to say the code base is not enormous different uh, than the week before, it's just small changes. Uh, but also on the infrastructure, you must be very, very flexible. There can be tomorrow a new application there, and you have to uh, gear it up and uh, must be t taking care that it's performant enough. Uh, so you guys work. are super excited. You said your developers are excited. How do you re recruit the uh, the new full stack developers? A new developer environment exists. So there's a, there's a need for that speed. Speed is critical. Yeah. And the young guns coming in, yeah. they want to work in an environment that's got challenges. So what are the things that you throw in at the new recruits, and how do yeah. you recruit new talent? Recruiting new talent is hard. Yeah. Um, also because 
a hospital has a, let's say... A certain culture. So, so <laughs> culture, but they, from the outside, I think it's a little bit boring. Uh, well, I think IT in a hospital is crucial for the hospital, and you can go to each hospital that, from some size, and you see they do really huge things uh, on IT side. So what the first step is uh, to do is try to go to the out outside world and to convince them how exciting IT in a hospital can be. That's also one of the reasons I sit here, uh, by the way. Uh, so that's what first, the first step. Secondly is, uh, yeah, we really, we do a sales pitch to everybody. And so a an inter job interview for me is the first, first step is a sales pitch to them, uh, to make them comfortable, uh, to, to see how flexible we work. The culture is very important that you have been in the team. We try to convince them. Uh, and then uh, the hard part is, especially for the young guys, they are completely, they, they come from college, they have a very special mindset uh, how to do, and in the real world it's a little bit different. Uh, and yeah, we try also to convince them that the real world is, you have some, some things where you want to go to, but in, a, in a, an enterprise uh, environment it's a little bit different, it goes a little bit slower, uh, and we try to convince them. And the most important part of hiring people is to keep them. And I think we do a good job of this. So we have less than 1% turnover uh, 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 people that le leave us. So that's very good. Let me, let me ask you, put your, put your crystal ball hat on. You know, look towards the future a little bit. You mentioned it's hard to put data in the cloud. You're a very data-centric business file. What would, what would have to happen? I mean, Mark made a comment, Mark Hurd made a comment like, I expect most of the data mm. to be in the cloud. What would have to change in your environment for that to happen? Well, first of all, I think uh, what we will do, step one, and we are busy already with this, is, is the, the, the traditional IT. Uh, uh, ERP, uh, for example, uh, email, uh, SharePoint kind of things, uh, yeah. the Office 365. You're already uh, moving those towards moving SaaS this, applications. Uh, because there I can't give any added value. Right, non Not on the software side, not on the... Uh, on the infrastructure side, so it's just email, or it's just SharePoint, or it's just an ERP uh, okay, We're, we're hearing that over and over so again. So there I follow completely. That's simple, and we will, we will do. Uh, we are in process of this, uh, and, and that's easy. Then you have uh, uh, the, the huge transaction uh, business, where, it's, where you make a difference, and that's yeah. our medical file. There I think will take more time, it will take more time. Also, the architecture of the application has to change, probably. Uh, and also, it's our grown jewels, uh, and, and, and that's, that's different. Uh, it's also a lot of transactions, so also performance-wise, it's completely different there. So I think that will take a long time. But medical data, you have in different kinds. Radiology images, for example, where we store them now on Permis. But if someone comes to me and they say, I have a good uh, deal, and the TCO is lower for putting it in the cloud, that will be no problem at all. And that, I think, is, 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 is very, very easy also uh, technically uh, to do. So, the, so rich media and this kind of things, I think it will move faster. Uh, the database will be probably the last. We here at I guess to be IT manager, UZ Levin. Uh, thanks for sharing your data and insights here on theCUBE. Of course, it's great. Uh, final, I'll give you the final word here quickly. Summarize your experience with the beta and what's going on at Oracle Open World this year. What's the vibe? Share with the folks who are not here. What's the big story here at Oracle Open World? Well, I was surprised, uh, uh, but uh, the story is cloud completely. <laughs> uh, I've, I haven't heard anything else. Even the database is not mentioned anymore. Uh, you really have to look for a sessions about stupid hardware or stupid database. <laughs> cloud is, the, uh, is there and Oracle is definitely ready for for this, that's, that's No, all the that's geeks clear. are in those sessions. We heard that <laughs> yesterday. This, John Fallon's like, this is some deep sessions, mm. but deep, there are deep sessions, yeah. but also high level too, right? Yeah, indeed. Great, thanks uh, so much for sharing. Really okay. appreciate your time. Uh, we are live here at Oracle Open World on Howard Street in San Francisco for theCUBE's continuous exclusive coverage of Oracle Open World. Go to siliconangle.tv because we have every Wednesday we feature Women's Wednesday highlighted women in tech, and also every week we pick a guest of the week and we make it a podcast. We have podcasting. So then you go to wikibon.com for the great research. We'll be right back with more live coverage from theCUBE after this short break.